is an application for recusal or whatever it is, I think you really need to put it on record so that we deal with it and before any other thing we can deal with it and uh, dispose of, of it one way or the other. But uh, I don't think it's, it's really necessary to have speeches in the absence of specific application and prayers. Your Lordship, the so-called speeches have been um, invited by the disclosure from the court. We, the advocates appearing for the petitioners, we were not aware of how the bench was constituted. So when it was disclosed to us that the bench was constituted by the Deputy Chief Justice, it necessitated us to address you, your Lordships, on Article 165, Clause 4 on the constitutionality of the constitution of this bench to hear these three specific files. And that is the issue that we want to address even before we go to the application for recusal. Because it's our humble view, Your Lordship, that the so-called empowerment of this bench to hear these specific files is itself unconstitutional. By the reading of Article 165, Clause 4, it is our reading that the only person who has the capacity to empanel a bench is a chief justice. So we want to urge this court to perhaps in, uh, interpret for us whether the deputy chief justice can empanel a bench. Number two, your lordship, is when did, where did the chief justice get the authority to empanel the, the bench? Was the chief justice present? Why did the Chief Justice execute her functions and her mandate under Article uh, 165, Clause 4? What was the necessity of the delegation of this function? Those are pertinent issues, Your Lordship, that requires clarification before we go to the root of the matter, the crux of the matter. It's our submission, Your Lordship, that the Chief Justice, who is exercising delegated powers, cannot further delegate the Deputy Chief Justice. That's why the Constitution is in white and black that the obligations and the duty belongs to the Chief Justice. Finally, Your Lordship, the reason why we find ourselves in this situation is because of what the court is struggling to explain to us. That three files have graciously generated expediency and other files that were consolidated, that six file with the lead file two for 522, have no reasons why this should be before you. Noting that your lordship, those matters were equally satisfied as urgent and raising heavy constitutional matters. When I looked at your orders, your lordship, that you issued to on us today, you repeated the same, that they raise weighty constitutional matters. Why are we being discriminated by the court that our files are not considered as a priority and that the, pri the files with orders are the only ones that the court is sitting on a Saturday? The Chief Justice is empowering, the, the Deputy Chief Justice is empowering the bench. We are called, like, uh, in a lightning speed, to appear before you. Is it not because there are some orders that the state wants to vacate? You we cannot run away from that reality, your Lordship, most respectively. My Lord, with your kind permission, for the record, uh, Dr. Kamoto for the fifth respondent, in Israel. I believe the reason we are here and the reason why we took forum is because we recognize that there are different parties in these proceedings. <coughs> so it will be abominable for a section of the parties to seek to colonize these proceedings and treat them as if they are the only ones entitled to the audience of the court. So in this regard, my proposal is as follows, that each of the party who has, whose representation has been taken, gets an opportunity to indicate to the court what applications they have before the court, so that we're able to proceed methodically. And each party then, the court can then give directions on how we move to treat each of those applications. Otherwise, we may be here indefinitely if each of the parties takes the opportunity accorded to make lamentations, to make speeches, <coughs> and to mourn. So we respectively urge that we get an opportunity for each of the parties 
to ventilate the issues because the fact that the has a pending application which is duly filed, a preliminary objection which even contests the jurisdiction of the High Court to hear the matters because it is a matter relating to the termination of a presidential of a deputy president, which in our view lies squarely within the domain of the Supreme Court. So we want to afford an opportunity procedurally, we shall ventilate all those issues and hopefully the matters being raised or to be raised about recusal and so on, they will fall by the wayside. Thank you, Madam. For the fifth interest, for the first interested party, yeah, Mr. 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 Lord, just, yes, Mr. Mr. Uh, I, I was about to interject uh, when Mr. Uh, uh, when Council, uh, uh, Mr. Nokubek, the other one. The Yes, Mr. Yes. Yes. was uh, addressing. And that is exactly uh, why I wanted to. I wanted us to have order in the way we, we, we conduct this proceeding. And I was about to ask Mr. Ndegwa, uh, after all that, what is your application? Your Lordship, I'm very clear in my application. My application for which I have We are now making an application, you respond. What is it that you want? Your Lordship, permit me to make an application under the Mutunga rules <coughs> that following the disclosure of the court this morning, that was made by Justice Murima that this Honorable Court does determine whether the Deputy Chief Justice has the power to empanel the bench under Article 165, Clause 4. Your Lordship, and whether, if she has any power of that nature, the same ought to be communicated to the members of the Republic by the Chief Justice, that, that is to say, Your Lordship, that the Chief Justice has delegated her powers under Article 165, Clause 4, to empanel this bench. Your Lordship, this is the background of my application, that on the 14th of October, 2024, the Honorable Chief Justice did, did empanel this bench to hear and adjudicate over six matters which were consolidated with the lead file being 522. And the files that were consolidated your lordships, my lady, were 522, 509, 537, 528, 525, and 506. Your lordship, it is our humble submissions that this bench was exclusively and panel to handle those files. And that the communication was effectively made to the parties by the Honorable Chief Justice. I am giving the background of my application. And that we are aware that subsequently other files, and the most important one is E. 014 of 2024, which came from Kerogoya, was equally selected for empanelment before the Chief Justice. To date, Your Lordship, there is no communication from the Office of the Chief Justice other than this morning that this file was equally empaneled and designated for hearing by this bench. Your Lordship, the other, uh, the other ground is this, Your Lordship, that when we appeared before you on the 16th of October, Your Lordship, we sought your indulgence, your lordship, to have a further mention on the 18th of October. Well, I'm sorry we are constrained to interject uh, to seek your guidance. My name is Muzomi, appearing for Professor Kindiki. Listening to my colleagues, 
he is making an application before the bench, complaining about wrongs supposedly made by the Chief Justice and the Deputy Chief Justice in bringing us to this session of today. For me, the clarification I wish the court to provide is whether an application of that nature can be made informally without the CJ and the DCJ being made parties to that application and being offered an opportunity to explain so that uh, to be fair on uh, these state officers, it's easy to speak to the gallery and cast all manner of insinuations and there's passions against them. And if my Lord fights that an application of that nature cannot be made informally without actually filing a formal application and joining the CJ and the DCJ so that they have a chance to respond to these insinuations, I suggest again, and I beg the court, I'm a very junior counsel, but Professor Mugay wonders that we run the risk of coming to a court of law to speak in the gallery. In parliamentary language, what I fear is happening is what is called filibustering, my lord. To filibuster is why you go to a forum intended to deal with the business of the day, and you keep making speeches upon speeches that have no bearing on the business of the day, where the motive is to ensure that the business of the day is not productive. To the best of my knowledge, the business of the day well, there were applications on their side. There were applications on our side. And the court was graceful enough to give both sides an opportunity to come today to ventilate those applications. Instead, we've lost two hours, my lord. We've not been addressed on those applications. We are just filibustering. My lord, my lord perhaps if I may. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. My lord, you have been invited to interpret Articles 161 and 163, 1B, 1 and 2, which designate the Chief Justice and the Deputy Chief Justice as head and Deputy Head of the Judiciary. And you're being asked to inquire into the manner that they perform their duties as head of the Judiciary and to interpret Article 165.4. That 